Well, hello and welcome to the CAD tutorial channel. Today we're going to be doing a beam analysis in SolidWorks. SolidWorks is a, a great tool to do this type of work. It's great for college students in a, in a statics or strengths course. Um, it's also great if you're doing quite a bit of beam work and uh, you need some tools and some CAD uh, skills to get uh, your results that you are looking for quick and easy and as painless as possible. And uh, so this is a, a great skill and, and uh, tool to use. Um, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We are we're going to be putting out quite a few of these types of videos here in the near future. We already have quite a library of things in a variety of different CAD software for you to improve and add to your skills. Um, and if you have some ideas for our future videos, please leave it in the comments and we'll be sure to try and get a, a video out for uh, your viewing pleasure. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I have a, opened up a part file here and I'm in my, if you look down the bottom corner, I'm in IPSs for my units. And we're going to begin by creating the sketch that's going to be the beam. So we'll start a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to take a line off of the origin and drag the segment over, and then a second line segment a little further. So I have two line segments. We're going to put a dimension from point 0.1 to point 0.2, and we'll make that 48. I'm going to then place a second dimension from point 0.1 to point 0.3, and we'll make this one 96 inches. All right, there we are. So that is our basic sketch for our beam. I'll go ahead and exit out of that. All right, so now we need to go ahead and start a new part file. And this will be our beam profile. So we're gonna start a sketch again on the front plane. I'm going to use a rectangle, center rectangle method. Pick the origin and kind of drag it on out. I'm going to place two dimensions on this. One for the width, and we'll make that one unit. And one for the height, and we'll make that two units. All right, I'm going to exit out of the sketch, and there is our profile. In this particular case, this will be our beam profile, and it's going to be solid in nature. Uh, it's very simple, but today's example, we're trying to keep this as easy as possible. But you can certainly get very elaborate in your beam profiles here. The secret to making this work, though, is how we save this profile off. So I'm going to come up to File and Save As. And then I need to take a look at the file structure here. In SolidWorks program files, they have the root SolidWorks, then a subfolder called language, then a subfolder called English, then another called WellMint profiles. In the WellMint profiles, there's a couple of subfolders. We want to be using the ANSI inch folder for that. And then inside of that, there's several other folders. Now I've already made a folder in my ANSI inch folder called solid for all of my beam solid profiles. So inside here is where I want to save my part file off as. So I'm going to call this rbox3 for today. But I don't want to hit save yet. I want to change the file type to library feature part or sldlfp file extension. Once I've saved that off, I've now saved that profile off that I can reuse it um, over and over again. Okay, so at this point, we'll go back to our beam profile, our beam sketch, and we're going to come up to the top and go to across file to insert weld mints structural members. And here's where that file structure exists. So you start with the standard ANSI inches. You got ISO or ANSI inches. 
And then from there, remember our folder was solid that we created. And then in size, we should see our R box three right there. Now I've picked my profile. I'll pick my beam. And I had to pick both line segments. Now I have one tiny issue that needs to be addressed. If I come over to the side here and take a look, my beam is laying down flat. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here on my rotation angle and make it 90, and then hit apply. OK, so now my beam is standing upright how we intended it to be. OK, from here, I'm going to place a uniform load across this portion of the beam. And I'm going to put a concentrated load somewhere in this segment of the beam. That's why we have two line segments for this beam analysis. In order to put the concentrated load on, I'm going to come back and edit my sketch. And I'm going to place a point somewhere on this first line segment. Okay, and from there, I'm going to put a dimension from the origin over to here. And we'll just place that at 24 inches. Okay, we will exit out of the sketch. You can see the point there. That's great. From here, I'm going to switch to features and reference geometry point. And I'm going to do a projection. And I want to project onto this surface. So the face is up there. And then I'm going to pick the point that I wish to drag up to that surface or face. Done and done. Click OK. You can see the point one is located on the top of the surface there. All of our geometry is taken care of and our CAD work is done. Now it's time to go ahead and start to do the FEA on this. In order to do that, we're going to go over to Simulate and New Study. We're going to be doing a static study today. Once I get into my static study, notice how everything has kind of changed the look. I'm going to apply a material to begin. And we're going to be just be using alloy steel. I want to make sure my units are in IPSs. I'll hit apply and close. So now my beam is in an alloy steel. Now I need to go ahead and add my fixed locations. So we'll go start with fixed geometry. The first one we're going to do is immobile, no translation. And that'll be at point number one or node one. I should see three green arrows indicating that it's locked off in all three axes, and click OK. We'll come over to the end of the beam, and we'll go back into our fixed geometry. In this case, we're going to use reference geometry. We're going to do it on node 3. We're going to do this as our reference geometry is going to be the front plane. Okay. My translation, I want to change to inches, although it's not critical. And then I need to make sure that I'm picking which two directions that I want to lock this down. Now, when we're, when we're doing this by hand, we don't really worry about the if coming in from the backside, we only draw the arrow up. But since this is a 3D model, we have to come in from the backside as well and up. So we are going to use a long direction two. That it should be coming up for us. And then direction three will be behind. I'll go ahead and click OK. I can see the little green one popping a little bit through the visual and then one from the back. So everything is in good shape for that. All right, so now we've taken care of our fixed uh, locations. And all we have left to do is put our loads on. So external load 
We're going to change that to force. We're going to begin with our concentrated load on the point. So we'll go ahead and pick that point. We're going to reference that to the front plane. We're going to change, I didn't grab the front plane. Okay, change our units to IPSs. It's going to come from direction two. Now notice that it's going the wrong way, so flip it. We want a downward force on it. And our downward force is going to be 500 pounds. All right, done. On this part of the beam, we'll go ahead and add a second force. This time we're going to use a beam for it, and we'll pick the beam segment. Again, we're going to reference it to the front plane. Units should be in IPSs. And we want it per unit length since it's a uniform load. And it'll be direction two. Flip the direction. Now I have to be careful with my units here. They're not in feet, they're in inches. So I was originally planning on doing 300 pounds per foot. So in this case, I need to change that 300 into inches. So that'll make it 25 pounds per inch. And I'm good to go. All right, so our loads are taken care of, our fix are taken care of, everything is ready to go. We're gonna now come over to run study and mesh this up. That's taken care of. And then we'll go ahead and run our study. And here we are with our first results. This is our axle and bending. I'm gonna change the chart options to floating for our values and on our definition tab I'm going to change that to PSI. If I want to do a different test I can change it from any of these points here. This one's fine for what we're doing right now. And so now I get my results and I can see a color scheme that's affected by where our loads are at. All right, the next thing I want to do, I really don't going to do too much here, is I'm going to create a shear diagram. So under my results, I'm going to right click and come up here to define beam diagram. And we're going to do a shear in direction one. We're going to do this in pounds per foot. And we'll do it to all. And there we get our shear diagram. Again, if you don't like the units this way, right click, chart options, and change it to floating. Or if you like them, leave them alone. And the last thing I want to do is I want to get my reactionary forces on our two fixed locations. So let's go ahead and do that. Under results, right click, and we're going to list our resulting forces. And in this, we'll do reactionary forces. Units are going to be in IPSs. We are going to select our joints here and here. And we will update it. And now we get our reactionary forces uh, in the two directions. I hope you enjoyed our beam analysis, our simple beam analysis here today and you give it a try, and you find it useful and helpful in your uh, endeavors moving forward. Please remember to subscribe to the channel for more exciting videos like this, and if you have an idea for our next video, please leave it in the comments. Uh, enjoy and good luck.